progress. Okay, let's begin with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks we can meet via Zoom. We give thanks for the light that you've been shedding abroad our path concerning chronology and the repeat of Millerite history and just information concerning time and dates and so forth as the Millerites had to also deal with these things as well. And I pray that they can contribute to the message to, uh, to the world and to others in the Seventh-day Adventist Church of the truthfulness of your leading in this here message, in this here movement, and that we can bring this here message with power to the, the others in the church and to the world. We ask for your Holy Spirit. We ask for our vessels to be clean, inside, purified. And we ask that uh, those who watch in video later may be blessed by this study as well. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we left off uh, just in the year 1493 BC. So this was the the crossing of the River Jordan, and we were dealing with the, the ceasing of the manna, and uh, according to my calculations and all the information that we can get online, that the, the manna ceased uh, on the Friday uh, morning. That would have been the, the first, the 14th day of the first month. So that would have been the, uh, the Passover. We would have had manna for two days. That particular day, mm -hmm. and then uh, I did some calculations. So if we, we, I wasn't sure whether they were on this uh, when we finished, but I uh, already had them on this here uh, before the end of the last um, uh, presentation. So we have the words then on the Sabbath, being the morrow after the Passover. They did eat of the old corn of the land, unleavened cakes and parched corn. So that would have been the, the feast of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the manna would have, wouldn't have ceased then. So the next day they would have been expecting the manna to fall. It says then on the morrow, after they had eaten of the old corn of the land, making this Sunday the 5th of May, being the 16th day of the first month, the manna ceased, and neither had the children of Israel manna anymore, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. So they may have been expecting the normal manna to be falling or falling on that mm -hmm. uh, particular Sunday, but uh, then it ceased. <clears throat> so we have seen that the manna initially fell on the 16th day, nearly 40 years prior being on the second month, the total time over which the manna fell was 14,587 days. Um, that's inclusive reckoning. So including the last Sabbath day, that's, uh, and this, this was uh, 2,084 weeks. So there was, 2084 Sabbaths when the, the manna did not fall, and then 2084 preparation days when a double portion was collected, and then 10,420 days when the manna uh, fell, leading to be it on that particular day. 
So I just have uh, the demonstrate uh, like a right out there with the parcel, the Passover, double portion, and then the fifteenth day, the reading of the old corn of the land, unleavened cakes and parched corn. But um, I presume that they would have had the manna from the previous day as well, potentially, mm -hmm. and then. The Sunday then the manifold ceases to fall. Uh, this is uh, something I found on the internet that uh, if we add up the ages of the patriarchs from uh, Adam to Moses, okay, going through going through the line of uh, Levi, it comes to uh, the 1260 plus times 10, so you get 12,600. Um, just one thing that comes to mind, somebody made a mention about uh, the generations, because we talked about the four generations. So we know when it comes to the four generations, when they come out in the fourth generation, that the generation that's marked there is, is through the line of Levi, right, as you're noting there. Mm -hmm. right? And and that's because Kohath, Amram, and Levi are the only ones that they give the ages of how long they lived in in in, in that in those generations, right? Mm -hmm. you know, we don't have the ages of anyone else. Now, when it comes to the four generations, um, there is also four generations to when they go down into Egypt, as we've seen. Right, so we're going Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then Joseph marks the fourth generation because he enters into Egypt first. And then there's four generations where they come out. So um, I just wanted to note that, that there is these four generations in the first 1,215 years and the four generations in the, the next 1,250 years or 1,250 215 years, these two periods of 215 years, each have four generations, but they're not the same line. But we don't get, you know, the years in Joseph's line um, because uh, we're going to be following Moses' line. But the question is why? Um, why would we be following Moses' line and not Judah's line if we're following the line of Christ? Um, I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on that. Well, Joseph has the double portion and... Okay. So Joseph has the double portion. Moses is the line of Levi. That's the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And then we have the other line, which is the seed of Christ which is kept track of, but just not chronologically in that period, other than its relationship to the other lines. Joseph, uh, he typifies Christ. What's that? And he typifies Christ, yeah. But still, Christ is going to come from Judah, from the line of Judah, not from the line of Levi or the line of Joseph. Yet all of these three lines are dealt with in some way, but just differently. So, you know, somebody was suggesting that we need to look at the line of Joseph, but, but the fact that Moses' line is the one that gives us the, the symbol of 1216, 10 times 1260, I think is significant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have done a wee bit more research. Um, so this is... Uh, just gives you the age when the patriarchs, when their son is born. So obviously, this is Seth. So Cain and Abel were born before that. So we don't have yeah. their ages. And then we know that uh, these are the ages they lived to. Yeah. And then the differences. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so Seth lived 18 years less than his father. Enos, seven years less. Cain and Kianan, that's uh, five years more and so forth. And then we have the years lived after the birth of the son. Okay. 
and then the years lived after his father died or was taken by God in the case of Enoch. Yeah. So I think I said incorrectly uh, that Haran was uh, one of the first person, I think, or who died before his father, which was incorrect. Okay. So there's actually um, there's actually four others who died before their father, before Haran. Okay. So we have here, um, for instance, the age Joseph lived to. He lived uh, 37 years less than his father. He, uh, was, he lived 56 years after his father died. Or sorry, is this... Uh, where he was 56 when his father died. Yeah. And then he lived 54 years after um, after his father when, he, when his father died. So that's how it works out. But it nothing really particularly stands out. Um, when you add up the numbers or that type of thing, but it's just their okay. information. Yeah, so people can reference the chart. Yes. They want, they're curious about some of them. And then I uh, calculated that as of 2022, it's that uh, Enoch is 5,445 years old. So, um, we don't have, well, this is basically as far as being going in the, in the line of the ages mm -hmm. of, the, of the fathers and sons. Obviously now, uh, for instance, I don't mention Japheth, because we don't know how long he lived. Right. But we know how long Hashem lived and so forth. So it's just, uh, it's not always just the firstborn son. Yeah. Well, it's and the then, line that we're following. Yeah. Line of so it comes down to um, Joseph. We know he had Ephraim and Manasseh in the seven years of plenty. But, but we, we can't tell exactly how old Joseph was. We know it would be between 30 and 37. And then, uh, so he lived after the birth of his uh, sons between 73 and 80 years. So okay. Basically, that's, that's me finished there. Yeah, so, okay, so just another point again here. So. You know, we're normally, we're following the line of Christ, but here when we get to Joseph, you know, we're not following Judah because we don't know how long Judah lived. Yes. Joseph, Joseph and Levi, we have their ages of when they died of Judah. Mm -hmm. Now the 22 generations then would end with Jacob. So Joseph yes. was the 23rd. Yes. And his brothers, it all be the twenty third generation. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So we'll go on to the next that would be judges. Okay, so I don't know if we want to cover this again. Yeah. Well, the whole study on the judges, I don't know. You could maybe give some highlights because we did mm -hmm. do this section on the judges. but um, Yes. Because what's, so, what's the main gist of the judges? Because there are some periods of like the 300 years and different things like that we should go over. Yeah, actually, and, well, I forgot to do, it's actually Joshua. Oh, Joshua first? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, you got to do Joshua. There's not much in Joshua, but... Um, okay. There we go. So 
So after the crossing of the Jordan in the spring of 1493 BC, the children of Israel proceeded to defeat seven nations in the land of Canaan before the Lord divided their land to them by lot. From Joshua 14, 5 to 10, it can be ascertained that this took six years. We have here a um, story of Caleb and he's, he's going to ask, uh, maybe you can just read it for me. Just. Okay, you want me to read it? Yes, please. Okay, as the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Then the children of, of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land. And I brought him word again, as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy, thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. So it's 45 years later. The year, yes. that Caleb, the, the year that Caleb began to spy the land of Canaan was about a year and three months since they had left Egypt. Caleb states that he was 40 years old at that time. Therefore, he would have been at the most 39 years old during the time of the Exodus. In the above verses, he states that 45 years had passed since he espied, since he spied Canaan making him then, as he states, 85 years old, therefore being 46 years older than he was during the Exodus. So you're, you got the chart here, just explain it a bit more. Yeah, so it talks about there, as the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Yeah. So we have here Caleb is 85 at this year time. Yeah. And uh, he says he was, he was 45. He says he was 40 when he spied out the land. So that's when it was 45 years prior. So you can work, work there, work out that uh, it was about a year and three months roughly. Mm -hmm. from, from that spying out of the land from the Exodus of 1533. Mm -hmm. so, so we have a period of 46 years there. We do, yes. So I, I'm, I mentioned this here coming up. Yeah. So these 46 years can be seen to mirror 46 days. You mean by the, the 40, 40? Sorry, sorry. The six, the six days followed by the 40 days that Moses stayed up on Mount Sinai before okay. receiving the Ten Commandments on the two tables of stone. So we have that where that's mentioned in Exodus. That uh, cloud covered at six days. And then the seventh day, Moses called Moses out of the, the midst of the cloud and Moses went into the midst of the cloud and he was there for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, how long does Ellen so have this year? that period is, uh, that six days? Because she mentions it too. Yeah, she mentions that he's there six days and then he's called into the, into the cloud on the Sabbath. Yeah. And then he's there for 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah, okay. So I have up there in 1533 BC, you have six years, sorry, six days and then 40 days. And then we have 40 years and then six years. 
command being divided or the land rest from warm. So this just the following verses then Caleb says to Joshua, Now give now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in me, spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Caleb the son of Jephnua, Hebron, for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephnua, Jephunna, the Jephani, you pronounce Jephani. Jephani, okay. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Unto this day, because that he had wholly followed the Lord God of Israel, thereafter the land had rest from war. And in the following chapters, the land begins to be divided by lot. So I'm kind of taking it, he's not too long in taking Hebron, you know, a matter of a few days. I'm not foreseeing any like, major year long siege. So the time span of the book of Joshua, in Patriarchs and Prophets, we read, before the distribution of the land had been entered upon, Caleb, accompanied by the heads of his tribe, came forward with a special claim. Except Joshua, Caleb was now the oldest man in Israel. Mm -hmm. So this quote occurs in the context of Caleb being 85 years old. Joshua was the only Israelite older than Caleb and therefore had to be at least 86 years old. Now, he could be about 85 and a half or something, but I'm just saying, I'm taking his 86, maybe at the, okay. the youngest. So Joshua was 110 years old when he died. Therefore, at the most, he led Israel 24 years after this time and 30 years from replacing Moses as God's chosen leader. Potentially then being 80 years old, the same age as Moses when he had led the children of Israel through the Red Sea. This would place the history of the book of Joshua from 1493 BC to 1463 BC at its greatest extent. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of him being 86 years old because that would then mean he's crossing the Jordan, uh, the sea, the, the river's being divided when he's the same age as Moses, when he divided, the, when the Red Sea was divided for him. Okay. And so, but you can only speculate, that's just, what well, would be my best guess. So I've added here, some information that we get from the Talmud that accounts for 40 years of the wandering of the wilderness and then seven years taken to conquer the land of Canaan and seven years to divide the land among the tribes, putting the first jubilee cycle precisely 50 years, 54 years after the Exodus. So that's Wikipedia on the jubilee. That's from where I get it from. Okay, now I've looked at that before, and 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 I remember it differently. That there's seven years uh, to do, to divide till they divide the land, and another seven years till they have rest from their enemies. But that's what Wikipedia says the seven two periods of seven years are. Well, they're actually they're quoting from the the Talmud. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, but um, so the dividing of the land, so they're saying seven years to conquer the land? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're going to start dividing the land at the end of that seven years. Yes. And then there's going to be seven years in which they finally divide the land. So it takes seven years in the dividing of it. And then they have rest from their enemies at the end of that. That must be what it is. I, I don't know, but 
but anyway, there's two periods of seven years. So. Yes, and you had connected this, this was like 252 years from the death of Jacob. And you had noted this here. Mm -hmm. uh, and like the, the seven, seven periods of 252 years. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there would be three periods then from here till 723 BC. Yeah. So this year period could be divided into two periods of 54 years with 144 years in, in the middle. If this year Talmud was correct, but yeah. But, uh, and then, no way of proving that we have no way of proving it, but no. but they have a reason why they calculated it that way. Yeah. It also gives us two more periods of seven years that connect us to the story of Joseph and to the story of of Jacob with Leah and Rachel. Mm -hmm. And if you combine the two periods of fifty four years, uh, you'd have one hundred four hundred sorry one hundred eight years plus one hundred forty four, mm -hmm. and this kind of reminded me of the way. Mm -hmm. The fathoms were mm -hmm. working out in inches that we find in Acts 27, verse 28. We have 15 fathoms and 20 fathoms being mentioned. And there's 72 inches in a fathom. So that mm -hmm. works out to be 1,080 inches and then 144. Oh, sorry, uh, 1,440 inches then. Yeah. Mm. Which gives us 25, 20 inches. That's correct, yes. And this is 252 years, so that's why mm -hmm. it's fun. And so I'm marking at 1487 BC is where I'm marking the um, six years after the crossing of the, the Jordan. Mm -hmm. And I have... The tabernacle being set up then in that year as well, as the land being divided by lot. As I say, we're not too sure how long the land takes to be divided. Um, and then it mentions there the land had rest after these six years. Okay. So let's move on to Judges. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, that's a pretty interesting piece of the puzzle there, the 252 years. Um, and remember, it was in 2016 when I was counting the seven periods of 252, that's 17,064 years, or 1,764 years. And you suggested counting backwards from 34 AD. So there's 1,764 mm -hmm. years from 34 AD to 1798. And then when we counted backwards, we came to the date that I had for Jacob's death. Yes. And so that's seven periods of 252 years uh, divided as two uh, or as three, three, and one. Because 756 years backwards from 34 AD to 723, and then another um, 756 years from 723 to uh, 1469. Yeah, should maybe add them, do my own diagrams and add these to this. I haven't added that sort of observation. Yeah, we should put that that in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're moving on now to the judges. And uh, this deals with the 450 years of Acts 13, verse 20. So people think that uh, this year period is referring to the judges. Uh, when you read it in the King James, it says, and after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. While the modern, some modern translations, the New International, says, all this took about 450 years. After this, God gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. So it has a different uh, sort of 
Well, it's the yeah. sentence order. So, so yeah. the thing that's interesting is, is the King James translators translated the Greek correctly, except that the translator failed to order the verses because in Greek, English, you know, sentence order matters, but that's not the case in Greek. And, and so when you actually look at the Greek, you can see that the 450 years uh, precedes the time of the judges. But because he just translated it literally, he left the Greek sentence order, and that, that makes it less clear. Um, so it's just a matter of placing some commas in or rearranging the sentence that you see that the 450 years is not the period of the judges. Um, it's another period. So these 450 years go from the choosing of the fathers until he divided the land to them by lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I mentioned there that would cause problems with First Kings chapter 6, verse 1 where you have 480 years being mentioned. Um, but out of that 480 years, you have 84 years of the kings of David and uh, Saul and Solomon. So that would make it 396 years. So it would really fit these here, 450. So the choosing of the fathers, uh, I'm using Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 7 as a proof text. The choosing of the fathers, which marks the beginning of this 450 year period, related, relates to Abraham or Abram being called out of her. It says, Thou art the Lord God who did choose Abram and brought him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees and gave him the name of Abraham. So using that as what the Acts is saying, the choosing of the fathers. So we maybe see this is about five years before he left Haran. I said a half year speculated, but I think it's there's other. Um, yeah, so I actually added, added that into the I didn't have that in my previous, um, the first one we looked at about the, uh, the time we left, about the, about the time period of Abram, Abraham and so forth. So I've added that there into the, the, the table that when Abraham or Abram was 70, when he left Canaan or Ur, sorry. <laughs> When he left her, he was 70, so I've added that into the diagram. I didn't have that in before. Mm. Okay. So I just have there, what's the correct way of seeing it? Israel came out of the land of Egypt, so this is First King 6. And then you have the fourth year of Saul, Solomon, sorry, and the temple construction begun. That's, uh, you can see the judges there being about 396 years. And that would be a wrong way to say the dividing of the land by lot. God gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. But this is the right way, choosing of the fathers, which is based of 450 years. The dividing of the land by lot, God gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing interesting about in Millerite understanding, because because uh, William Miller is trying to get the 6,000 years to end in 1843. So he, he, conflate, he inflates the years, years of the judges um, to try to get this, this number. Um, but he just completely rejects 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 as being in error. And, and that... And that was the one thing I couldn't do is accept that a Bible verse is an error. So, you know, once I looked at the Greek of Acts chapter 13, verse 20, it was pretty clear that the error was just a reading of the verse in Acts, not 
uh, some typo in First Kings chapter six. Mm -hmm. About this year's space of four hundred fifty years, I reckon it's going to be not far off four hundred eighty from when Abram left her to the dividing of the land by lot. Yeah, well, some people put it to the birth of Isaac or to the weaning of Isaac or things like that. So they just... Um, that would be near. Yes, that would be near 450. Yeah. Uh, that's where I had placed it. It was to the weaning of Isaac. It's just a, con a continuation of that 400 years where he's just, you know, roughly adding that in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's where you want to place the choosing of the fathers. Mm -hmm. uh, so the time of the judges, this is the most vague chronological period presented in the Bible. When it comes to placing the period of when a judge began and ended, their period of judging, we can on the most part only speculate with approximate dates. We have, though, been given two 300-year spans from which we can place some of the judges. So there's one period from 300 years from Israel dwelling in Heshbon on Aor. Is that how you spell that? How, sorry, pronounce that? Aror. Aror. Okay, so we find this in Judges 11.26. It states the words of Jephna and a message to the king of Ammon near the end of 18 years of Philistine and Ammonite oppression. While Israel dwelt in Heshbon and her towns, and in Aror and her towns, and in all the cities that be along by the coast of Arnon, 300 years, why therefore did you not recover them within that time? So Israel began to dwell in Heshbon after they defeated Sihon, king of the Amorites, this was likely in late 1494 BC and several months before the conquest of Canaan, beginning in the spring of 1493 BC. Numbers 21, 31 tells us that this was when Israel dwelt in the land of the Amorites. So they're going to conquer the Amorites and then they're going to conquer Og, the king of Bashan. And then they're going to go to Baal Peor. And then you're going to have Balaam having to come from Mesopotamia all the way to Moab. To, uh, and then that's, so that's going to take several months as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you're going to have that Baal Peor incident. And then you're going to have the Sermon of Deuteronomy. Moses dying, and then so after that there, you have Joshua then, uh, the cross of the Jordan then, um, the 10th day of that first month. And then we have 300 years from the ark at Shiloh. Ellen White says, the ark remained at Shiloh for 300 years. Until because of the sins of Eli's house, it fell into the hands of the Philistines and Shiloh was ruined. The ark was never returned to the tabernacle here. The sanctuary service was finally transferred to the temple at Jerusalem and Shiloh fell into insignificance. Taking these 300 years as exact, they would begin and end about seven years after the 300 years of Judges 1126. This would make Eli contemporary with Jephthah. So crossing of the Jordan is about a year, well, less than just several months after the dwelling in Heshbon. And we can also mark then uh, Eli when he was born, when he began the judge. And then he dies when he's 98, and then the ark is removed. So that's a, a period of 300 years. So it would be the case that there are unspecified periods where the judges overlap in their ruling. 
it is likely that some of the judges only judge for a specific locality of Israel. The account of judges renders that Jephthah chiefly subdued Ammon from the areas of Israel east of the Jordan, namely Gilead and Manasseh. There's no account of him subduing the Philistines, who were also said to be oppressing Israel with Ammon for 18 years. And then we have the 20 years of Sam, Samson as a judge. So another example of an overlap of the years mm -hmm. given in the book of Judges uh, is it can be understood that the 20 years of Samson, when he judged, was a portion within the 40 years of the Philistine oppression. So we have here in Judges 13 verse 1, it says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. And we are told that Samson judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. Mm -hmm. And Elamite, Elamite speaking of Samson states that in the early years of the Philistine oppression, a child was born through whom God designed to humble the power of these mighty foes. So this would have been maybe like a year or two into, these, into this here 40 year. 40 years, and then he's going to marry. Um, says there, just as he is entering upon manhood, Samson connected himself with the enemies of Israel. And then he's going to, talks about this year, wife he is going to enter into a marriage with. But I think they ended up burning her. And then out of that, he then destroys her fields. And then the Israelites deliver him him into the hands of the Philistines and he grabs a, a jawbone of the ass and kills him. And then it says after that victory, uh, the Israelites made Samson judge and he ruled 20 years. So if you have to sort of gauge if he's born early in that Philistine period and then it meant, as he is entering in the manhood, I'm thinking he's going to be maybe about 18 years old, 20 maybe. Mm. And then he's going to be uh, he has that battle and then he judges for 20 years. So you can see clearly uh, that them 20 years are going to take him towards the end of that 40 year Philistine oppression. Yeah, you definitely just can't take all the periods of years mentioned in the book of Judges and add them up. Well, you can do it, but it's not going to be. That's not right. like in reality oh, yeah. yeah right <laughs> i mean yeah yeah so you can't add them but yeah it's not going to reflect reality uh so it, it it is a rather complicated period i've never been able to work it out exactly I, i've looked at other people's charts but um well i actually have added up the years of the judges that you find the, the mm -hmm. dates that they give and it does come to a period of uh, 390 years, mm -hmm. 350 years up until the Philistines. And then you have a 40 year period with Samson here. Mm -hmm. And this kind of matches what we find in Ezekiel, the, the, same, the same period that he kind of it's for the, the kings. Yeah. You have a 350-year period for what well, was a 390-year period, and then a 40-year period for Judah, 390 for Israel, yeah. and uh, 40 for Judah. Yeah, so in, in, in this, so one of the things about the period of the judges is Joshua is not the period of the judges. He's excluded from that number, correct? Yes. So, so that's always a problem that people have often. They're uncertain about where they're going to start the period. And then um, to say when the period of the judges ends, where would we end it? Because if you say until Samuel the prophet, um, when does Samuel occur before Saul? Or are you going to you understand what I'm, I'm asking? Yeah, so, so how... I have Joshua here, and then it talks about the elders who outlive Joshua. Yeah. And then we have that, a period of 350 there, and then 40. 
Okay. And then yep. you have Eli, and then you have Samuel. So it's uh, yeah. so we're looking at this to fit into a period of three hundred and ninety-six years from when they crossed the River Jordan. Yeah. So it, it's too long a period if you do it this way. Yes. And then if you make if you take First Kings to be beginning when they have the Exodus. Yeah. It would be three hundred and fifty six years, it'd be even shorter. Yeah. So it would be more more of an issue, just more of an more of an overlap happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we start the, the, the 480 years when they fully come out of the land of Egypt, wouldn't they cross the Jordan? And that was one of the things we struggled with, at least I did, in, in doing that, to depart from Usher in such a radical way. But there was other things in the spirit of prophecy that showed that was correct. Yeah, so I have that 356 years would be the time period of the judges if you're going to have these 480 years begin at the Exodus. Well, mm-hmm. if you put it at the crossing of the Jordan, it gives you 396. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the consequence of fitting in the generations of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 5 to 6, into the period of the judges. So if you read Matthew, it says, And Salmon begat Boaz, or Booz, of Rechab. Booz begat Obed of Ruth. Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king. So Salmon married Rahab, who had hid the spies in Jericho at the beginning of the 396-year period from the crossing of the Jordan to the anointing of Saul, unto the birth of David, this period would become 406 years. In this period, we have, uh, we are given about five generations from Solomon to David. It would imply that Boaz, Obed, and Jesse would each have to have, on average, about 125 to be an average of 125 years old when they became fathers of the sons identified in their lineage. And uh, well, it's kind of quite an old age to be fathers. Mm -hmm. So Rahab, I hear I have an estimate her, she's a prostitute in Jericho at the time of the walls falling in 1493. So I've given her age about 20. So she's going to have Boaz, she's going to marry Salmon and have um, uh, Boaz as her son. So I'm giving her, I'm making her about 50 years old to, to still be childbearing. I don't know, is that, how old is childbearing, is that possible? Well, it's it's possible. It's not likely, but it mm-hmm. can happen. Yeah, so I've extended it basically as, as far as you could maybe reasonably estimate, you know, just to sort of try to fit this in. And then Boaz is going to be 130 years old then when he marries Ruth, or just actually not before you, he marries Ruth, and then he's going to be 130 years old when he uh, he, he gets Obed. Okay. This is like estimates, you know, just to roughly, you know, if they're able to fit. And then um, Obed's going to be 130 years old when he begets Jesse. And then Jesse's going to be 116 years old when he begets David. And uh, so he actually 
live. He's still living when David slays Goliath. So we don't know how old David is when he does slay Goliath, but I think he's going to be maybe about 17 or so. So he's going to be over 130 years old then, roughly, when David was doing that, if this if kind of working out. We do have some idea of uh, that Jesse is old. So 1 Samuel 17, verse 12, emphasizes his old age. Jesse had eight sons, the man who went among men, for an old man in the days of Saul. He is still mentioned, okay, so I've mentioned that he's alive there when he slays Goliath. So uh, Samuel does say, Book of Samuel says he is an old man in the days of Saul. So I'd say about 120 or so, maybe anyway. Um, so I have here, this is like the, the tables. So I'm able to make just the years when Eli was born, when he began to judge. And then when Jeff the judges, you can maybe put in the 18 years here or something you could maybe add of Philistine and Ammon oppression. That's something we could be sure of. Um, that's something I can do. And then uh, we have the Ark being removed in 11, um, 11, 187 BC. And then, uh, so Eli dies, and then we have the uh, Abz, Ibzan would be judging as well at the same time of Eli. And then these, we have Samuel invested as a judge 20 years after uh, Shiloh. Uh, the arts removed from Shiloh. We get that in 2 Samuel 7, verse 2. And verse 17 just talks about Samuel 11 to the judges all the days, all the days of his life. You know, so I'm thinking Samuel, if he's going to live until the reign of David, he's he himself is going to be about 130 or so years old when he dies. If this year, uh, if he's going to be, maybe I'm put, putting him about as a, like a teenager, when Eli, Eli dies, so he's going to be about 130 years old but then when um, when he dies in the time of David. Well, in, in the time of Saul, really, but David's about, he you know, anoints David and dies several years after that. So that's uh, the period of the judges covered. If there's any questions, move on. Okay, so, I mean, there's no... There's not nothing else other than that information that we have to go on. Nothing in the spirit of prophecy that helps us in that. That's all I find, yes. Okay. Now, I know some people try to say there's just missing generations in, in the account in Matthew. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what do you think about this here? Because I would, I would kind of favor... A less period for the judges, I think. Less than than what we have, you mean? Well. What the Bible gives us? No, if you had this tier to go by and, and not, I know we have more credible evidence from First Kings 6 and the other yeah. things, you know, so there is, but this, how do, have you, how do you find this here? It's kind of. Well, I don't know. I, I don't speculate. I just take what the Bible gives us. <laughs> and, and and I try not to argue with it. Um, I mean, it's definitely possible. I mean, and we see a, this a lot in the line of Christ where people are much later in their years before the, I mean, you know, why would, um, you know, Jacob, for instance, wait until he's 84 years old to be married. Um, you know, things like that. So. Yes. Yeah. So, 
you know, I take what the Bible gives us. To me, to speculate beyond that is not uh, is not wise. Okay, you kind of. Stephen's a little bit stopped, paused. Okay. So Stephen is kind of paused there for a moment. Any, anybody have any questions about uh, what we've seen so far in this study? Is anybody there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So, I mean, it's pretty interesting. I mean, there's... Yeah, we're here. I'm just pondering everything. I need to look at these tables. <laughs> I need to watch I need it, to watch look it at again. them quietly on my own. Yeah. I need to watch it again. I need to watch it again before... Yeah. Now, some of these things, like dealing with the, the 480 years that's mentioned in First Kings chapter 6, verse 1. So, as I said, you know, Usher just... Or not Usher. Um, Miller just kind of rejects it. He just says it's incorrect. He's going to take what it says in Acts 13, 20. And, you know, so just in the context of what Stephen's talking about, you know, we have something that seems unlikely or improbable. Um, we have the information in the Bible. And so often what we will do is we will try to fill in the missing pieces with our uh, speculation. And, and I find that that's not the best thing to do. And especially... If we're that's gonna where, that's where people go wrong. Yeah, if we say that the Bible must be wrong or this must be a typo or something like that. It's not uh, good. Yeah, that's where I would have the problems. So that's something that I've always tried to avoid in any of the things that I've done. I don't like speculating because I could miss out on something that's there. And I definitely don't try to correct the Bible to fit my understanding. Um, oh, good. God will show us sooner or later. Yeah. You know, so we don't have to speculate, really. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it is possible that Matthew is just um, choosing uh, the numbers symbolically. Um, and that maybe there's more people in, in those generations, but we're not given who they are. And so, you know, I just sort of accept that that's what the Bible's given us. There's no point trying to add to the Bible. Um, you have another witness in Ruth as well. It gives you the same lineage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, you know, but the, but the point is in Matthew, it's talking about how many generations. It's giving us that this is a number of generations. Where there, I mean, a person could be a descendant. But I, I, I think that Matthew's probably correct. Um, in the in the in the lineage of Matthew with the Christ line going from Abraham, yeah, Abraham to Christ, it does skip out some um, generations as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's possible. Well, it is possible, and it's it's possible that lots of things are possible, but I'm not going to say which is the correct one. <laughs> you know, I just, there's other possibilities that, but people make a big deal about it, about, um, you know, contradictions in the Bible and so forth. Um, and, and to me, it's just not really an issue in, in something like this. We just kind of accept what it says. Our, our understanding is limited, so there's no point trying to resolve it in some definitive way. But we can see that it is possible. 
Okay, so half here. When Saul is anointed, Eshu Bish Bosheth, he's also born at the same time. We don't know how old Saul was. We know how long he reigned. And we have a statement from Elm White here concerning the second year. Uh, this is the second year Saul. Um, Jonathan initiates the defeat of the Philistines at Giba. And then mm -hmm. Saul makes a presumptuous sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just read the Elm White quote here. It was not until the second year of Saul's reign that an attempt was made to subdue the Philistines. The first blow was struck by Jonathan, the king's son, who attacked and overcame the garrison at Giba. Then we have the story of, I think uh, he eats honey or something and Saul wants to kill him. Mm -hmm. What happens then? And then, uh, so that's the second year. And then uh, Saul... I have here Saul commanded to destroy Amalek. So this would be uh, in his fourth year. Mm -hmm. And disobeys the Lord by not destroying all that the, all that was commanded. So it's 400 years from entering of Canaan. So I'm taking this from Patriarchs and Prophets, page 627. Mm -hmm. And this is, we use this for evidence for 1533 BC. Uh, so could you read that for me, please? Yeah. Evidence for 1533 BC being the date of the Exodus, the 400 years of patriarchs and prophets, page 627, paragraph 3. The Lord sent his servant Samuel with another message to Saul. The prophet said, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suck, suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. The Amalekites had been the first to make war upon Israel in the wilderness, and for this sin, together with their defiance of God and their debasing idolatry, the Lord, through Moses, had pronounced sentence upon them. By divine direction, the history of their cruelty toward Israel had been recorded with the command, Thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. Deuteronomy 25, 19. For 400 years, the execution of the sentence had been deferred, but the Amalekites had not turned from their sins. The Lord knew that this wicked people would, if it were possible, blot out his people and, worship, and his worship from the earth. Now the time had come for the sentence, so long delayed to be executed. You want me to read still? Uh, yes, please. Okay, this passage from Patriarchs and Prophets relates to the events of 1 Samuel chapter 15. It references the command found in Deuteronomy, which was given by Moses just before his death and the Israelite crossing of the River Jordan. If the Exodus occurred in 1493 BC, these 400 years would begin in 1453 BC after the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness and end in 1053 BC. This date equates to the fourth year of King David rather than of Saul. However, a 1533 BC date for the Exodus would have the 400 years end in the fourth year of Saul, which would be a more valid year for the events of 1 Samuel chapter 15. So that was one of the pieces of the puzzle that convinced me of the 480 years. Yes, so. Yeah, ending so that we have 1533. You can see that we'll go to early in David's reign rather than Saul's. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we can see that Saul <clears throat> was uh, born about 10 years into Saul's reign. And then uh, Mephibosheth, about 25 years later after David. And then David begins to reign. He's 30. 
And so that's when Saul dies, also in that year. So David reigns from Hebron. Mm -hmm. And then Ishbeth Sheth reign ends, I think uh, we've got two years later. I'm not too sure exactly when he dies. I think it's could be that time, but I've kind of refrained from being dogmatic in it, on that there. And then he reigns from Jerusalem then uh, when he's 37. And you can work out that Solomon was born when he was 52. So that was uh, when he was 18,720 prophetic days old, mm -hmm. roughly. <laughs> um, it's a symbol. And then Rehoboam was born uh, when Solomon was 17. And then David dies. And Solomon begins to reign just before David dies. So Solomon's, he's, he's 18 and is uh, David. His father would be 70. You've assembled the air of like 187, just mm -hmm. the, when Solomon begins to reign as well. Uh, Shimnai breaks his oath and is killed. That's about three years into Solomon's reign. And then the, the temple construction begins. That's the 480 years ends then. And then it's completed after seven, seven and a half years or so. And then Solomon's house is completed after 13 years after he begins to reign. Mm -hmm. Or uh, actually, no, sorry, after 13 years after he builds the house or the, the temple, the, the temple of construction on the house, I've had it began, began the same time. So, uh, and then Hiram has given 20 cities. I'm not too sure. Exactly, it's either um, when Solomon is 38 or 42, and then Solomon dies when he's 58. <clears throat> so we can now bring in a sort of date span correlation. So the first time prophecy given by Moses, sorry, Noah, or uh, well, when Noah begins to build the ark and to uh, prophesy concerning the flood to judgment, 120 years, and then it's uh, 977 years to the Exodus. But from that position of uh, beginning to build the ark, it's uh, 1,533 years to 977 BC. And we have here the time period when Jeroboam sets up two golden calves. And then at the end of 977 years in 1533, we have Aaron setting up the golden calf. Mm -hmm. And we have a 120 year period beginning this time. And a 120 year period we can identify of the reigns of Saul, David, and Solomon, also ending this year period. So this is something that is found out after, once you have 1533 BC, as the date of the Exodus, these year date span correlations uh, can then be uh, found. And to me, it's like a, confirming of the chronology mm -hmm. that we have when we see these type of things. Yeah, and now, now this shows up in lots of other things as well with the chronology that what's we the, have yes, time showing up as years. Hey, what's the time yes. what's the time between the death of Moses and Saul Saul's begins reign? Yeah, because you have that center. You just don't have that one mark to the number of years. What is that? Yes. What, how many years is that? I have to get my calculator. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, yeah, right. you just would take uh, 1493 minus 1097. So you just would. Yeah, 396. 
That's the time period of the judges. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we we dealt with that number. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Um, you also have a, a correlation then with these 40 years after the exodus and you have 40 years then uh, before the golden calves and 40 years afterwards. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, 1017 then till the death of Moses and 1493. And then it's going to be 1493 years to when uh, Solomon begins to reign and that's in 1017 BC. So again, another date and span correlation. Now, the basic mathematical thing behind that date and span correlation just has to do with the length of time that we have BC related to these events, right? So if we didn't have 1533, we wouldn't have such a correlation. Correct? Um, no. Yes. Yeah. But it would always be true then if you're going to take, um, and that's because the number of years BC is, um, that is if you add the year and the span of time from 2510 BC. So that's, that's the place where we're, we're working, 2510 BC. So if you add those together, they will always add up to 2510 BC. So it's it's the placing of 2510 BC that actually creates this coincidence. Correct? God, in, God incidence. <laughs> okay, God incidence, yes. Well, I'm using coincidence in, in the old classical sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just to a coincidence things that occur in relationship to each other so yeah so what is it about the number 510 bc what is the relationship mathematically that creates this structure do, do you understand what i'm asking oh yeah yeah if you just add 1533 plus 977 you get two five ten. Yeah. Is that what you're no? You're yeah. saying something else. Yeah, okay. Now and and the creation of the world, does this have anything to do with the creation of the world being in forty forty six BC? Is what I'm asking. Right. I mean I understand you, you we can put these together, mm -hmm. but there is there's there's a mathematical reason why 510 does this, because we have uh, these dates BC. So the dates BC, in a sense, if we have these spans of time and we didn't have these dates BC, they wouldn't really mean anything. You understand what I'm saying? That's correct. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So you know these spans, the dates wouldn't really match. Right. Okay. So, you know, so somebody can kind of look at it. It's kind of almost like there is just once we create this, these dates, once we create the chronology, it creates this coincidence of, of time. And, um, and, and it's going to happen anytime you do it, it's all going to add up to 510 BC. But the question is why 510 BC, 2510 BC, I mean, what is it about 2510 BC that causes this to occur? This is the first time prophecy. Okay. And and so if we had it at some other year, it wouldn't work out. Right? So, yes. We could just take any year and do this. Mm -hmm. but the span of time is going to match the years BC. Right. If we had, if we did this from 2030 BC and we, we tried to count uh, the spans of time and the years BC, it wouldn't add up, correct? Yes. Okay. So, so what, what is it about 2510 BC? 
Why, why does it do this? Have you thought about it? Because it takes it's taking spans of time and it's lining them up with with years. So why is it doing this? I'm not seeing what you're well, I'm just saying. <laughs> It just seems weird that it's 2510 BC that does this, not some other year. Like, you know, if we went from the year of the flood and we counted the span of time, you know, to let's say 1533 BC, we couldn't go back, um, uh, you know, we couldn't go to 1533 years and it would give us from the flood it would give us the 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 date right so it only works with this 2510 mm -hmm. right not any other date correct you 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 agree with me there that it's not just some little yeah. trick yeah i haven't worked out yeah anything else but i would presume that would be the case yes yeah because sometimes there's things like this that people run into but they're just little mathematical tricks that you could use with any date Mm -hmm. But this isn't the case with this one. If, if anybody tries it out, you'll find it doesn't work. So that okay. means it has, it has to be of divine origin. Have you tried it out then with other dates? Yeah. Okay. So we also have a correlation here with um, what... Aaron says and what Jeroboam says. And these here you have quite similar language. These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So just a, another um, just connection. And then we have a, a 777 year chiasm that uh, would come about from having 1533 BC as the date of the Exodus, that you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't have this if that was the case either. So we have the birth of Moses. He's 480 when he when the prophecy of Genesis 6 verse 3 comes into being, and then it's 120 years to the flood. And then we have 777 years to the birth of Moses, and then he, he dies after 120 years. And then we have that 480 year time period mm -hmm. to uh, the temple construction. Now, again, if that was, uh, if, if that period was going to the Exodus, that would be 80 years there. It would just, you wouldn't have that mm -hmm. order uh, uh, matching up, I guess. And then the 600 is 120 times five. So we have all these like 480s, 120 times four. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the midpoint, I just noted that as well as uh, 2001 BC. I thought it was a sort of uh, worth noting. Not that I have an event there, but just as a connection to 2001 AD. As a, but potentially just uh, 9-11. So uh, it's a midpoint of the structure. So not saying it in particular, just, uh, just, thought, mm -hmm. just noting it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the, the king's um, finish. So it's, it's kind of, I don't know, if it's probably not worthwhile going on to anything else. No, no, we won't go on to the kings yet. Well, that's the king's. You did the United Kings, but not the Divided Kingdom. Yes. Yeah, so we would leave that for next time. Okay. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for doing that. Um, it, it's definitely helpful for you to go through it than just to read the paper. Um, now, so we're going to add some things to this paper as time goes on. We're going to add some diagrams. Um, and then we're going to have a bunch of issues dealing with the periods of the kings. 
that we have to, I don't think the period of the Kings is going to be as easy, even though it's a shorter period of time. Because uh, there's a lot that happens and lots of little details. So I think it's worth it to go through the period of the Kings in detail. Um, and sort of hammer out some of those those problems that arise and there's lots of them um but but the thing that i was amazed of amazed at is after working out the period of the kings in the way that i did which was really sort of the traditional way i then recognized i could have simply with a few little recognitions of some details just added together the period of the kings and and arrived at 391 years in and a half um but there are some things about the chronology of the kings that assumptions that people brought into it that uh, we're going to look at when we go through that so i mean that's something i worked out in detail so um it'll be interesting going through it together um yeah i could uh, um <clears throat> we just got a wee minute just go back to the Abraham. Okay. Uh, being in Haran, I've just just tell my quotes. We can look at. Um, it's very short. Just looking for it here. Okay, and so this is to cover uh, just some more things that we had done before. You just wanted to clarify some points. Yeah. So. I, I, was, I mentioned there that I added Abraham leaving Ur when he's 70. Mm -hmm. So just the justification for that there. Well, I've mentioned Acts uh, that mentions there. Okay, I don't have actually Acts statement, but it mentions that uh, God called them out of Ur, the Chaldees. And it quotes from Genesis 12, when he's actually 75 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so um, we, had, we, yeah, we had studied that. I, did you see that? Were you there in the morning study when we were talking about that? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. But uh, just L. Mike quotes concerning that. So, um, she says Abraham was 120 years old. This is when he's about to sacrifice Isaac. When the terrible and startling command came to him in the vision of the night. Okay, so, and then she says, in reference to this time when Abraham was commanded to slay Isaac, we are told, so that was, that's me writing there. So as Abraham stepped out into the night, he seemed to hear the divine voice that called him out of Chaldea 50 years before. So I'm taking this is going to be her rather than her right. land. Because normally like, it's uh, Ur of the Chaldees. We don't really have, I don't think uh, Haran is part of the Chaldees. So this would place Abram leaving her age 70. However, El White would also place the covenant of Genesis 15 when Abram, well, I say there was 75, but he might be, he'd probably be later in this is after he'd be older than that because he's 75 in chapter 12. And then in chapter 13, he separates from Lot and then he has that battle. Chapter 14, mm. with the five, five kings, and then we have chapter 15. So I think you, I think you maybe mentioned during the week there that he would be in his 80s. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking that it wouldn't be, he wouldn't maybe be as old as that. So let, let me say, um, maybe, I don't know. I'll just put a question mark there, but so but maybe between certainly he's not as old as 86. No, it can't be. 86. As, <laughs> no, so 
to also being, so she says in Genesis 15, she relates to him also uh, being 50 years before the command to slay Isaac. She says, Abraham rose before day. Oh. And as he looked up to the starry heavens, he called to mind the promise which God gave to him 50 years before. So that's the starry heavens. That's Genesis 15. Mm -hmm. I take out, isn't that right? That's where I would think that she's referring to. Now, that would if he left her, yeah, yeah. So that would be if he if he um, he left her when he was seventy. Uh, sorry, Haran when he was seventy five. Yeah. So it's at least she says fifty years, but it's going to be. Um, it wouldn't be more than forty five. Yeah, but I think uh, you have an incident then with uh, Lot mm -hmm. in chapter thirteen, and, and then the the armies. So I think it's going to be nearer seventy five than it is going to be nearer eighty six. You know, so I'm thinking um, it's going to be maybe about seventy seven, seventy eight, maybe about three years. So that, that means that 50 then would be like 43, 42, maybe years in actuality. And she, okay. So when and, you're uh, dealing... And she, yeah. and she qualifies it in, uh, she qualifies in Patriarchs and Prophets. She talks about the same starry yeah. heavens, you know, and she says nearly 50 years before. Okay. So it's not, she's saying it, so it's not going to be exactly 50. Yeah. Maybe. I'm thinking it's going to be maybe about 43 or so, 40, 40 I'm like I'm speculating again, but roughly it would be nearer that end rather than, if he was in his 80s, it would be like 30 something. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Not there in Genesis 15. I don't think he's going to be in his 80s. Mm hmm that would be too far away from 50 years old as a approximate. Okay. Yeah. Now, sometimes, and Ellen White's similar to us, for instance, um, when she talks, so sometimes she just sort of groups things together and gives a span of time, but doesn't make the distinctions that we're trying to make. And a really good example of this is when she talks about the years to the cross. She'll talk about things in the event of Christ's life connected with the cross. When she counts back, she actually counts just years BC. That is, she doesn't take into account uh, the 30 some years since into the AD count. And, and I can show lots of illustrations of this. And, and she does the same thing when she's counting up from the time of Christ to her day. And she gives the number of, of years that it is. She, again, is not really counting. Um, she, she's sort of rounding up to a larger number. So, so she does this sort of rounding, just kind of grouping things together. Because if she was really particular, she would count from the years of Christ. So she'll talk about 1,900 years since Christ, when really it's like 1,800 and... 40 years or 1850 years you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. so so that's just because she's she's not using the same if she's not using the actual event to count the date she's using more a and uh, just this kind of grouping it all together so christ is all the way from the time he's born even though she's talking about events 30 some years later in his life and and she does this with other things so that's why I have a bit of difficulty sometimes with some of these spans using them, especially when, you know, sometimes they're very rounded off, like 1,500 years, uh, et, et cetera. But I, I'm kind of cautious about just dismissing them unless there's other evidence or other statements that she uses that qualifies it, right? So when she says nearly 50 years, well, yeah, that could be 45 years or less even right yes you with me there okay 
So these things sometimes cause people headaches, especially when you're very particular and you want to get things where Ellen White may not be giving us um, something as an exact measurement. It's just a rough approximation because at the time she's writing, she's not trying to give us this exact measurement. Um, you know, and an example of this has to do with uh, um, the offering of, of the lamb, where she'll talk about uh, the period of time as just being 1500 years. Um, when, you know, it's actually going to be 1533, uh, starting with the Exodus, and then you're going to count the other, uh, you know, 30 years. So you'd say it's like 15, 1560 years or so that she's talking about. But she's just going to call it 1500 years. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. So any other things? Any other questions people have for Stephen before we close with prayer? One question. Is that document that he's using um, something that he's updated? Because I noticed a couple of things that were out of place. Yeah, we're it's updated, about. but we'll send it out once it's finished. No. Okay. All right. I know it's going to yeah. keep sending it out every time there's an update because we got a lot, a lot of work to do on it. Um, I'm going to add some diagrams to it once he or he can add them if he wants diagrams that I have um, however he wants to do it and then we, then we'll send it out when it's all done okay thank you okay so any questions for Stephen I know our brains are probably all fried <laughs> been another long day yeah okay Stephen you want to close with prayer you want to close for me, please? Okay, okay. <laughs> Dear Father in heaven, we are so very thankful for uh, the Sabbath, the blessings of fellowship. And um, we're thankful for the things that you've uh, been um, kind enough to show us from your word in the relation of the dates and the time spans in the Bible. And um, we ask, Lord, that we can continue to study these things, to understand them, and that we can apply them correctly. Be with each person now uh, throughout the rest of the Sabbath and, uh, and throughout this week. Be with us um, in this week coming up in the, in the studies that we are doing. And we ask for your angels to watch over us and to help us in our day-to-day -day struggles, that we may reflect your character. We pray for a blessing upon each person, a blessing upon Stephen and his study and his work. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.